the prototype and the protege come together mm. I'm still not happy with the results. So you can see I've got my CNC machine. I've just updated its firmware from my PC to the latest gerbil 1.1 um, because I want to run some different software because I want it to start auto probing the height of the bed. So I'm really kind of starting to fanny around with it because I want it perfect. So it's kind of getting annoying because I want to finish up. As usual, nothing's ever simple. This uh, Chinese Arduino type clone basically doesn't have the pins connected I need that I'd normally get on an Arduino, so now I have to solder in manually some Kynar. Excellent stuff. But then hopefully then I'll be able to have my probing access. Just a quick clip of the self-leveling system running. So you can see it's sort of moving itself around and it's actually following a grid here. When it's done, it's supposed to build a sort of relief terrain map of that workpiece. How cute. Smokes, Batman, it's full of holes. Mmm, PCB goodness. I can tell it's not perfect, but it's not bad. Let's get it on the bench and uh, see. It's taken a lot of effort to get to this point grand saga indeed Whew, that was some uphill battle i won't deny it it's it was a lot of things that needed doing i'm just going to try to remember we're going to try to just briefly re recap before i show you the board what we needed to do we had to um use eagle oh how am i writing this to use the cam job cam job uh, to do some outputs and then we needed to use um, a cam tool to produce a G code so ooh, ooh, ooh. to produce G code then that we could print effectively print using candle which was G R B L used to be gerbil gerbil control I believe and to use candle though we had to update the firmware to 1.1 on the machine and then to update the firmware though then we had to reset the recalibrate and I didn't show you that step but that's because of all the lead screws you have to do the steps per millimeter so I had to do all the research to find that but also um, actually I had to build a probe <laughs> to get the depth measurement so I could use the depth thing but to build a probe I actually had to modify the hardware so uh, yeah so it's been an adventure all in all but that's fine we've got our board now so let's just see where we are with it so we're going to zoom in on that and I'm going to get myself a slight abrasive I say slight abrasive this is crazy abrasive look at that it's like a sponge uh, just because I think we're going to need that so you can see here that's the probe that I soldered on so that we could actually make the board effectively live as far as the uh, on the pull up into the Arduino type thing on the board the 80 mega so that when the spindle touched that it made it dragged it to ground and it said depth re reached and you can see here this little zero zero calibration blip right there so I'm going to try to remove it from this sort of board I've got which is kind of a this is a really good way of doing it by the way especially if you've got your depth thing worked out this does seem to work pretty well oh crikey that's on well it's obviously a slightly bigger PCB than my earlier test PCBs too so it's got a lot more surface area I might need a tool I might need a spludger to get rid of that Whoa. Now we'll just get a bit of soldering iron, take that 
look tack off. Don't need it. So let's have a look. All in all, it's pretty good. I did notice here there was some tracking here that wasn't quite made. So I just sort of scraped that slightly. So I think you're almost going to have to expect a certain amount of visual checking on these PCBs when you're done with them. But I'm just going to give it a little rub with this abrasive as well. Let's just see. Just a gentle rub because it's really super abrasive. But yeah, yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm just eyeballing it. I mean, the pads are pretty tiny and you're going to have to be careful when you're soldering it that you don't get a bridge. Just, there is a little, a little bit here. I need to just scrape there, a bit of excess. So in conclusion, you can do it with the V-mill, which is what I use, the V-shaped milling bit. I say milling bit, it's more of a cutting bit. But I think um, the drill holes were done actually with a milling bit. And so because I didn't have all these drill sides, I just use a 0.4 drill and it just goes in and wiggles them around a bit. So you can mill out the holes rather than drill them out. Um, I think I would next time just use that same milling bit for everything. And I know it's, it would take a lot of time, a lot longer than it did with this. So this took about 13 minutes to do. Whereas the other way might take, you know, over an hour or something, maybe longer. But perhaps an hour with perfect results is a lot less time sort of wasted. If this was a complicated board, doing all of those reworks is going to be a lot of effort. I mean, especially when you consider all of these things. Now, there is a downside with this board, of course, because it was one of my other sort of scrap boards. It's actually a double sided board. Oh, and I've just noticed not all the holes. I'm just going to turn them up to the light. The holes aren't actually all the way um, through. No, that's that's a bit of a disaster. Actually, it means I'm just going to have to hand ream all those holes out. Just trying to see if we can even see light through them. Oh no, oh no. So I'm going to poke these poke these out and then I'm going to sort of explain to you what, what the problem is, yeah. Um, actually, I'll just tell you what the problem is. The problem is because it's copper on both sides, yeah, just like that, the copper will uh, effectively short out. So if we take our device, which we're going to poke through from the back, I'm just going to see, yeah, oh, that fits so sweet. If those holes were just that bit deeper, it'd be perfect. Um, it's got the danger here of shorting out on this copper, so I'm going to have to do something like sand this all away or something. I, I don't know. Or just reprint the board, really. Maybe we'll just solder to this board just as a sort of fun one. Um, or, or I can probably just ream out the holes to make sure there's no copper around the bit where this actually is. I'll work that out in a second. I think I've got all of these to do first. <sighs> Let's add that to the process. All these things to adjust next time. <whistles> ah! Why is everything annoying about this? I just want it to work, damn it. That, got it. <laughs> I only need holes in the ones I'm going to use. Thank gosh for that. Last one, hopefully. Uh, nope, three more. Bollocks. It's all right though, isn't it? It's a cool tool. Good. So 
that's what it looks like on that side so I'm gonna deal with that maybe trim the board down to the height it's supposed to be see you in a second hmm see if this will work so if I were a wire would I short out if I was exposed to this old so I'm going to push this in the wrong way yeah I think it's going to be okay just to sort of show you boys and girls at home that see this leg at, at the top I think if that was on the top you know flip this round I don't think it would short out to this plane you know for, so for example if I put that in like that it's, it's got quite a distance from that metal work so I don't think it's gonna touch so I'm gonna do that all round and then that's it we'll get on with it done ah finally it's time to do this thing so I have a fresh booby board a fresh one so instead of mounting it that way the same way over the USB coming out the top I found these angled pin headers and I'm really amazed I actually had any pin headers at all to be found so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder those ultimately I'm gonna solder them like this on this booby board at an angle so then that way I should be able to display the screen pointing front ways. So that's my ultimate plan, the ultimate plan. So the screen will be pointing front ways like so. So let's put that aside though. Let's get the um, LED in place. So I can just pop that in like that. Cool, it's looking good. Actually, I'm gonna do the resistors first because they're gonna be the worst. Need eight of those, four, Crikey, that was lucky. That's my last eight resistors. Good. Now I had a lot of people complain. They said, "Look, you get, you can get things for doing the resistors properly." Um, so yeah, I might, uh, I might invest in one of those. I'm just going to check these because remember I, I did ream these out. But oh bloody hell, I think the resistors are still friggin' short. All right, give me a sec. Oh, that was a pain in the grumbo, but luckily I had some additional fleeb juice to help me out there. Whew. Right, so now they're hopefully suitably reamed out. They're hugely reamed out. Um, if they still, oh, they still have the potency for shorting out, but f sod it. I can bend those out if they do short afterwards. So let's go with this first one, the very first resistor of desistor. The resistor of doom. So I'm going to be really careful because we've got effectively now this massive ground plane that doesn't have any solder resist on it. Um, so when you manufacture PCBs commercially, you've got ground planes that look like that, but they've got this solder resist, which is like a layer of varnish that stops the solder really wanting to stick to it. Whereas here, we've got something that's made out of exact material that solder wants to stick to. So you just gotta be a bit careful. You know, even if we bridge it, it's not a disaster. It's definitely something we can recover from, but best avoid it if you can. So I'm just gonna poke all these through as best I can again. Now I could bend these in a very specific way that would make sure, I would ensure that they weren't short, but I'm pretty sure I'll just bend them after they're soldered in, it's fine. It's not a big deal. So a lot of you happen to have booby boards out there. So I don't know if you've taken to the idea of doing anything with them yet. And I hope this might seem overkill as something to do, especially as I'm only getting a single seven segment screen, but it's, it's the first step of a, a directly driven screen from your own IC. The next stage, of course, of this is to use some latches and binary coded decimal to seven segment converters so that I can actually come on, get that in nice and straight so that I can actually drive more than one screen. So maybe, you know, for example, I probably wouldn't want to commercially make a load of these boards because I think they're probably a bit too trivial. You can make them at home. You can do it with a bit of air board like that. But I think it's a nice board for testing out your homebrew CNC machines for a start. If you've got one of those and you've got a booby board, then bloody definitely do it because it's definitely good fun. And this will be my test board probably for if I ever do any other CNC machine type thing. So I'll just always try to make one of these because it's 
we've got a very known tolerance of what we're trying to achieve with it and uh, and then yeah save the actual mass produced thing if I'm going to make a, a kit for example of a mass produced thing with the seven segments I'll definitely do something with those binary coded decimal chips but I need a common cathode LED there too, so I'll have to source one of those. Okay, so I've really I kind of messed up on that one right there, but I'm just going to check with my eyeball. But that's fine, actually, that worked out okay. So that's weird, I actually bridged over to that extra material, um, but solder being what it is, it didn't want to stick to it because it didn't want to jump the gap. So that's that's fortunate. So that's good, actually. This is quite a good, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say I would want to put like a a SOIC chip or something down. I'd probably use a, a dual inline package microcontroller if I was going to use it this way, but you could. Um, okay. Oh yeah, and that, that was loads of solder on that one. That one really should have screwed up, but it didn't. So yeah, it's pretty tolerant. I'm, I'm really quite impressed. So these machines though, you can get them for like 120 quid or something. I've seen them now. Even I thought what I was getting was a deal, I thought, on them, but you can get them kind of that price. I mean, it's not exactly that price, but certainly similar. Okay, so I have got one solder bridge there, but it doesn't actually bridge to anything. So I could just leave that, but I'm gonna have a go at cleaning it because I just wanna see how hard it is to clean, but I'll just get rid of all these excess pins first so we can tackle this as if it's a, you know, we're making this board in production. Right, clear all that out of the way. Let's eyeball this up. Hmm. It's looking pretty bloody good apart from just that one there, right there. So I'm just going to tackle that. Yeah, that's not working out. So you've got options here. If you've got some solder braid handy, you could try that. And do I have some handy? Yes, I actually do. So let's just do that. Let's try the old solder braid trick because it's pretty much the easiest way for this kind of thing. And you'll probably have some at home. So I'm just, there you go. It's still pretty good. So now we just have to shift a reapply solder to that one because we, we were so good at sucking it up, we sucked up all the solder. Oh, and I bridged it the other way. Hmm. If I had a smaller soldering iron, it might help on that. Just try one more time. <laughs> He's making it worse. Actually, I'm just just moving the solder's probably enough. Yeah, I think that's okay. I think I've I've got away with it. It's, it doesn't look so pretty because some solder sort of jumped over onto the other areas, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's pretty bloody good. Right. Let's get the display on. Right way round, of course. Mmm, look at that though. It does look lovely and shiny, doesn't it? There's something sort of steampunk about this build. These ones now should be much easier because these are a long sort of pad. These are much better shape. Boom. Boom. Yeah, that's good. That's real good. Boom. Boom. Do I have to say boom now every time I bloody do one of these because I just said it? Boom. Boo! Oh, he fumbled it, but it's fine. I was a bit limp-wristed on my um, soldering iron technique on that one. That was quick. That was real quick. See how quick it is though when you got your own PCB rather than you're trying to do something on Veriboard. Just compare this back to my Veriboard video. Ow! And uh, see how long that one took. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Maybe I could have done a better job of the alignment of those, but that's fine. I know some of you uh, claim to have some OCD against that, so that was just for you guys. <laughs> Hopefully that's freaking out your mind. So I'm just going to test this. Um, so I have to have 5 volts at pin 3. <laughs> so this is this is where it's, it's sort of trickier, because here it was easier um, to get at stuff. I'm just going to zoom out because I might have to hold it at a weird angle so you guys can see it at home. So I know what the 5 volts is, it's that there, that there. 
and uh, I, I can do the uh, other bit probably from this side yes do 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 so that's those four do 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 so we got two going off there so we're getting Interesting though, isn't it? That one, 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 that one. So this and this have some action going on that shouldn't be. So let me check that out, see what's going on. Okay, I found it. There's a bridge there. Little, little bridge. Look at that. Ticket to the bridge. I think actually that was one that we identified earlier <laughs> didn't address at the time so give that another quick a quick going over another quick going over so I just got to hold that there it's weird that um, yeah I don't know if you can just about see it that was good trust me on that one that one was good now um, because it's going through diodes of course you didn't have the reciprocal pattern on the other side that's that's good that's the way you want to see it really so I'm just going to now shove these in here. You can see this pin is a little bit mal-adjusted. So I'm going to un-mal-adjust it. Oh, that moved real easy. That was fine. So we want it there between... This one starts with five pins 3, 4 and 5. And this one is pins 10 to 15. So I'll just pop that there upside down like that. So again, you OCD guys should be a little bit happier with this. It's a bit more stable. I'm not getting burnt, but you're getting angry because I'm not using pin sockets. Just wasting a board just to do this. But it's never a waste if we learn it. Um, what I'll be doing, I'll put these two booby boards actually um, on my shop. So you can buy the Veraboard one and you can buy the... Uh, magically milled one just log on and choose them and buy them if you want these ready made and uh, you can marvel at my terrible soldering but you might already have a use you see I'm kind of excited because you might have already a use in mind you might just be looking at that going oh if I had that that would just solve my immediate problem what I'm trying to solve that's all soldered in. Let's just poke this all through. Come on. It's, yes, come on, come on. There you go. There you go. That'll do, pig. That's pretty good, actually, isn't it? It's a bit um, slightly on the wonk, but we'll, um, we'll wiggle and jiggle and jiggle around. Wiggle and jiggled and jiggled inside her. She swallowed a stoat to eat the fly to catch the mouse. What was in its eye? It wriggled and jiggled and jiggled inside her. I think she'll die. Right. Not sure how far to push that. I'm going to push it to that bit. I'm going to leave a little gap. The idea being you might want to mount this into something. So you want it a little, little bit, yeah. If I push it all the way back, for example, I don't know, I could too, and you can read the booby pins then. Ah, damned if you do and damned if you don't, eh? I'm just going to go with this one then, because I think it's going to be the neatest way. I'm just going to bend that. There we go. Bend it all up. Nothing like a bit of bending in microelectronics. That's what Bill Gates and all those people never told you. People who work for Intel. How much circuit bending you need to do so let's get in up and up close and personal and try to just get these last connections boom i might just do these as like this just like little half solders just in case someone wants to take them off that does have the downside of course it, mechanically it might not be as strong again damned if you do and damned if you don't guys I don't know why I bother trying. I 
can't win. I can't win like Dusty Bin. Bit more. See, I brought it up the legs at least, so it will be a touch mechanically stronger. But yeah, I think that's it. That looks pretty much connected to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, that is got that's gone super super duper solid. The final touch, I think, is just to trim off these pins. Though they look kind of pimp. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Every now and then I get a shard of metal in the man that go to hospital. Close your eyes. Blind guy. Ow, 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 that's really sharp. And I could have cut them closer. And I'm gonna do it now. Because it needs to not harm humans. Ow! Harmed me though. Right, beautiful. Look at that. Look at that shine. It's so gorgeous. It makes me want to cry. You can't really compare the two anymore, can you? The prototype and the protege come together. Mm. Mwah, love ya. This will sit on a shelf right, right, re nice. It'll sit re nice, it will. Um, Oh, it does look so steampunk. Look at that. That is amazing. Oh, crikey. Maybe I ought to make some of these commercially, but keep them all coppery. Let me know down below if you think I should make some of these, and I'll mill a few out and we'll sell them. You know, they're going to be quite expensive because there's a lot of fannying around on my part, but oh, they are fun looking. Right, let's test this out of the computer. Oh, it's so sexy. Finally, the moment of truth. Boom! Yes, it works. It works as expected. I don't know why I didn't expect it to work, but it does work and it works good. He made it and he made it great. Nice. So it's been an adventurous few evenings to get to this stage, but uh, I'm glad we're there. I'm glad it's done. If you want to do your own CNC milling at home, just be prepared that you're going to have to spend a lot of time messing with it. And then once you've messed with it, though, you can get things pretty neat. I mean, have a look at that. I mean, that does look quite fun, doesn't it? And it's got that lovely steampunky look. Um, uh, but yeah, you really have to weigh it up. If your time is worth a lot more to you than mine is in the evenings, maybe you want to get your boards outsourced and you'll get them made. But you're kind of relying then on the extra cost that if you send the board out and it's screwed up, you've made a mistake, then you're going to be paying for that mistake too. Whereas this way, at least you get a, a little cheeky, cheeky build, even if there's a lot of manual steps involved, um, just to sort of prove the design before it's gone. So pros and cons. Uh, I sub I suspect um, with a lot of tinkering you can get the machines really reliable. I think they'll stay reliable, frankly. They're pretty good. Um, if you can get the bed levelling thing with the probe, that's really good too. So it looks like you can convert those machines pretty easily if you're prepared to load the Arduino uh, GRBL firmware and things like that and mess with it. So be prepared to do some research. I could do like a whole series of videos just on that process alone. I know I'm just sort of probably going to cut this video down into chunks so we don't have to watch through all of that. But it was... Um, it was quite an effort, to put it that way. But yeah, hopefully uh, you'll have a go. Let me know how you get on if you do this yourself and what machine you use. Please like, subscribe, uh, share. Go on Patreon if you want to buy me a coffee. And as ever, thank you for watching. <laughs>